Time to talk uh, more football here in Highlands and in our latest edition of our League of Ireland chat. We welcome back Mr. Keith Cowan. Keith, good to see you. Cheers, Ashley. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we spoke, Keith, and I suppose since the last time you were on, uh, things have been going very well. And had it unbeaten in the last five matches down there at United Park. Yeah, we've kind of, I suppose, we've had that week kind of purple patch that, uh, that that will be talked about. Um, uh, I suppose it kind of, it's the fixture that we had this week. Pats, you know, wasn't a good result for us, and then we had Harps in the following week, which we were able to able to get a win there, and that seems to have sort of catapulted a wee bit, gave us a bit of confidence, and then you know, as you say, I'm beating the last five. Um, another one in there against against the league leader Shamrock Rovers, which was a, you know, a big result for us, obviously. And then you know, did, did you just expect of... that result? Did you, Keith? The Shamrock Rovers one or the Harps yeah, one? The, 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 <laughs> well, the Shamrock Rovers one beating the league leaders and the and the champions. Not really, no. I suppose uh, you know. Look, look, we have our team, we have our players. You know, we we have you know a certain amount of confidence, and we know what we're good at. Um, I think obviously the Harps one gave us a give us a bit of a lift on the Friday night, and then obviously you have the quick turnaround um, with uh, Shamrock Rovers in on the Monday, right. and uh, was was the way it worked out. And you just look, you, you think Shamrock Rovers, you think of the players they have available, they could put out two teams, you know, easily and make a lot of changes. Um, they they didn't make so many changes coming to us, so like they, they've they've given us that respect, and it was kind of one of those nights nice just where everything's went right for us as well, and. Uh, you know, we really we felt that uh, we everyone's everyone's given like you know the eight out of ten, and you know the keepers pulled off a couple of nice saves as well. And them going down to ten men uh, with about it might have been about twenty minutes to go, you know, didn't do us any harm either. So you know, like I th- thought, we very much d- deserved the three points. Now it wasn't like we were hanging on by any means, but uh, yeah, like that there's a massive win, and you know when you're beating the best team in the country, it's it's, it's going to give huge confidence to the team, and then it's just, again, it sort of catapulted us on a bit, and, uh, you know, again, another three games unbeaten, although there's a few draws in there that, you know, you would like to turn into wins, but look, at the same time, uh, you know, we can't, we can't be too critical of ourselves, we still have that unbeaten run for, for a few games now. Yeah, and, and at the start of the season, the way results were going, there was talk of Drogheda being involved in that mix at the bottom too, but there's now 10 points to to that uh, that bottom two, Keith, and I suppose that period over four days of beating Harps and then Shamrock Rovers and then draws came afterwards. Uh, this could possibly be the the defining part of the season where we are not going to be involved in that because probably ten points now is too big for those sides below you to catch. Um, I'm never going to say that because you know if I was in the Harps dressing room at the minute, I'd be saying, look, you know, two wins and you know you're right back up there again. So you know, uh, I think. Yeah, this, the wins are hard to come by when you're in our positions, but um, I feel that, you know, there's still it's still all to play for. It's a time of the season now where uh, squads are going to try and be freshened up. You know, uh, managers are going to try and bring in new players. You know, there's always there there's always that idea that you're, you know, you're you're trying to catch the team above you, and that always has to be the objective for, for what, what, whatever position you're in. If you look back to that Harps game, you know, Harps will one up on that game, and, you know, that would have, brought it maybe back into four points or, or something like that had that result stayed the, w- the way it did and again we were down to 10 men in that game but we we managed to come away with a win so you know it's the difference of one game or two games that can you know kind of swing those points right around and you know we still have to we still have to play harps um a couple of times this year uh, again so you know they're going to be looking at those games and you know the, the ucd games no respect to them they're they're always difficult games as well so it's 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 a league as well where you know where teams are picking up points where you don't really expect them to so um harps are by no means out of it you should hear by no means out of it so uh yes th- th- there is that gap there but uh, i think you know everyone has to just remain you know take it week by week looking to pick off the team above them and trying to you know close that gap wherever they can you guys are only four points off top six, Keith, which is still very much achievable. Uh, yeah, look, that's what you have to think about. You know, there's no point saying, oh, it's, it's impossible or, you know, it's not. You know, we you know we believe in what we have down there is, is, a, is a very good team. You know, we, we've gelled really well together. You know, we're resilient as a group. You can see that by maybe some of the result, results that we've got. But uh, yeah, look, we, we're, we're always looking up. We have to, you know, you have to be positive in that way and, you know, try and finish as high as you can. But I think we'll do that at the end of the season. We'll just be happy. We'll just see where we are now, take it week by week, try and get three points on the board wherever we can. And, you know, by the end of the season, then we'll, we'll see where we are. 
Yeah, uh, obviously the teams coming into the summer break, there was a lot of them were, were, were glad to get the break. Maybe the likes of Derry City, who who weren't in the form that they were at the start of the season. But on the flip side of that, maybe the break came at the wrong time for Drogheda. You were in such a good run, Keith. Yeah, you know, as I say, like um, when you when you're winning games, you, you don't really want anything to upset that momentum. Um, and again, it was that quick succession where we think we had three games in a week. You know, we had we had Harps, we had Shamrock Rovers, and then we had to travel to Daly Mount to play Bows. Um, again, uh, that was a match where we went behind in, we got back in level, and then we were maybe disappointed that we didn't win it after our second half display. Um, yeah, look, Derry seemed to have steadied the ship again um, after, you know, maybe it was, I think it might have been seven games without a win, which is not really... The form that, that that they would want to be taking into to the to the second half of the season, they picked up a one 0 win last week away to away to UCD uh, with a Will Patch and penalty, who's been brilliant for them this season. They have probably been their standout player. Um, but yeah, look, uh, I think they'll be looking to turn a corner now, and um, you know they've got a game this week where you would think that uh, they'd be looking to you know obviously Bowes is, is a difficult place to go, but you know they, they went there early in the season and won two one, so they'll be looking to do the same this weekend. Yeah, uh, and from Drahada's point of view, uh, you have St. Pat's this week, Dundalk, big derby, the, the game after that, and, the, mm -hmm. and then Bohemians. So uh, the games are coming thick and fast for you, so they are, Keith? Yeah, they are. And, you know, I suppose, as I, as I mentioned there earlier, there, there are no easy games in this league. There, there just, there just isn't. Yes, you know, you can see that maybe the, the divide between, you know, maybe, say, the bottom three or four teams, even you know, even or so even half the table there, probably much that you could look at it. But there is no easy games, you know, as as I said there just before. Um, you know, uh Derry traveling to UCD and having a penalty, a one 0 win. And you know, you see the points difference is massive. De Derry and 37 points and UCD have nine. So, you know, it's uh the as I said, there are no easy games. Yes, we have uh, a game now this week, which is you can see Pats after last weekend after going to Balafe and they're throwing away a 2-0 a 2-0 lead and then you know Rovers beating them at home in the Derby on Monday night so they'll be under pressure you, you might think to maybe to, be, to maybe get a win um, but at the, at, at the same time it's a game where we, we've gone there early in the season and got a point so you know we'll be hoping to try and get another point and you know, maybe three if everything goes well for us yeah, uh, let's look at the Harps situation. Shamrock Rovers at home at Finn Park. Uh, obviously, a very, very difficult team to beat. But Drogheda have have beaten Shamrock Rovers already this season. Can Harps do that? Is that possible at all on Friday night, Keith? Absolutely. You know, I think uh, Harps have shown. Obviously, last week, you know, been a been a standout, uh, been a standout uh, point for them. And you know, when when the game is, you know, a lot of people would have said the game was gone. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Pat's made four subs in the last 10 minutes to maybe, you know, try and freshen legs and, you know, keep things, keep a few players uh, a bit fresher for Monday night, which maybe they thought was the game and, you know, that, that they were going to be tested most in, especially being 2-0 ahead. But Harps have shown, you know, massive resilience to come back and, you know, a real spirit to, you know, to keep plugging away. And, you know, I think teams know when, when they go to Balafé. I know I've even going down to Drogheda now and, you know, speaking to other players around the league, like, Teams don't like going to Balafé. They just they they just don't like it for because they know it's going to be a battle. They know it's going to be a lot of you know defending corners and long throws and you know set pieces and you know and and that's tough, especially when a, a lot of teams in the league like to get the ball and, and like to play and like to you know kind of have it a more tidier affair. But uh, look, they've shown that they can take points against big teams. You know, Carrillo with a goal and Ethan Boyle with a header right right at, at the death. You know, um, I think if Harps can keep it tight, and just I think it's just, it's about staying in the game. You know, yes, they come back and you know after being two 0 down with ten minutes to go, and get a two all draw, which is great. But you know, it's, you can't be doing that every week. You know, those those are kind of one off type uh, type performances. And maybe me saying that now, they might go and do it again this week. But I think that uh, if if they can remain in the game, if they can frustrate um, Shamrock Rovers, and that means just you know. Staying, staying focused, staying switched on for the for the entire of the game. You know, plugging those gaps. You know, moving together. Loads, of, loads of communication. You know, and then just pressing them. You know, when when they get the opportunity. You know that that, that you can maybe try and nick one from a set piece or or you know, a, a, you know maybe a lapse in concentration at the back for them because you know they, they they'll have big games coming up now. They have Europe on their mind as well. So you no, know, this might be an opportunity to 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 catch them. We were cold. They played on uh, Monday night, 
as as I mentioned there, Rovers play pads. So, you know, they'll yes, they have the idea of the whole professionalism and you know be able to recover properly and all that. But look, there's an opportunity for Harps to, you know, to nick something if they're right and if they if they, if they do everything properly. Yeah, you've been in the, the Ollie Horgan dressing room, so you have an and I know speaking to Ollie through the years, um conceding first is is something that, that that he doesn't like in matches when Harps have to have to chase matches or chase games. Um, he'll be banging away at that drum again after the performance the last night and, and telling his guys to make sure they don't concede first on Friday. Yes, he will. Of course, he will. But I think you know that's not just an Ollie Horgan thing. I think that'll go for every manager in the, in the league. You know that conceding. I think it's about maybe not conceding, but it's conceding early. I think that conceding early because it, I suppose the game plan goes out the window. You know, I think um, for Harps on Friday night it'll be about remaining in the game. You know, try not to be, you know try not give them a two goal head start this time be or you know or what or whatever it might be, um, but sometimes again, you know with that goal or with that early goal it sometimes takes the pressure off teams and you see teams that you know at times you know once they go a goal behind the, then they actually start to play because you know they have to. Um, a lot of times it's about you know I suppose if it's nil nil you have something to hold on to, but if it's you know if you're one nil down then you have to go you, you have to go after the game you have to chase the game. So that's when you when a lot of teams can actually you know with that pressure off they can go and play then and they can put in better performances and you know ultimately score maybe a different type of goal that isn't you know from a set piece. Yeah, uh, I know we touched on Derry early on and Derry's form hasn't been as we mentioned at the at, at the start of the season. I'm quite sure Derry City manager Rory Higgins has sort of fed up listening to at this stage, even though they needed a penalty against UCD the last day to, to take victory. Uh, a couple of tweaks and maybe an injured player back can make all the difference. And uh, you know yourself, you've been involved in teams, Keith, when, when you get into a sort of rut, it's hard to get out of, but all it takes is a tweak or two to do that. And it's just finding, I suppose, the right, the, the right combination for that to happen. Yeah, you know, I, I suppose look, when you look at, at the start of the season, you know, Derry were taking up, uh, you know, getting results, but getting them later on in games, you know, so they were staying in games or, you know, they were controlling games. They were, you know, get, getting to the, the latter stages, injury time, you know, getting injury time winners. And you kind of think, you know, is that sustainable for the rest of the season? Uh, ultimately, it, it, it is difficult to do that. Um, look, there's no one doubt on uh the, the quality that Derry had, the players that they have available, you know, the the, the players that they brought in, you know, uh, Gina McGonagall is leading scorer in the, in the league. I think Patchen might be third. So, you know, you've got two, two of the top scorers, first and third, you know, so they've, they've got the quality, they've got everything right, but just something isn't for some reason. And I know they have a couple of in injuries at the moment as well. Um, but you know something just isn't clicking for them at the, at the moment, and uh, you know with with those lads coming back in, I'm sure they'll be able to get things say uh, you know back up and running the way they want them to. They get everyone on the field and, and get playing it the way they have been. Yeah. Okay. We mentioned already draw out your own club against St Pat's and and Dundalk playing UCD. You'll be keeping a close eye on Saturday night Sligo Rovers against uh, Shelburne, two of the teams that draw out. Are, are, are chasing down as well, uh, Keith. And as, as we mentioned, you're just, what, three points off Shelburne, four, planes, four points off Bowes, and seven off fifth place Sligo Rovers. So if Derry was to beat Bowes and Sligo and Shelburne was to draw on Saturday night and you guys were to, be, were to beat Pats, that would be a good weekend, would it, Keith? That'd be a great weekend. <laughs> a lot of ups and buts on there, actually, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, look, if, if that'd be great, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, look, I think yeah. Look, um, you can't be looking too far ahead with that. There, obviously, look, we'll have we'll have one eye in that game as well to uh, to see how that goes. You know, we played Sligo last week and uh, a nil nil at home, and maybe disappointed that we didn't get a bit more. It wasn't a great game uh, for the spectator, but um, definitely, you know, there was opportunities. Maybe both teams might be saying the exact same thing as there wasn't much in the game, but you know. Near the end, there was a couple of chances for for each team, and you know, again, frustration for frustrated for on both sides that none of them were taken. I'm sure, but I suppose maybe a point isn't a bad result, um, especially after getting beat earlier in the, in the season by the, by Sligo. And I just I suppose look at that Sligo game this week. Um, Shells traveling up there. Shells beat them at home uh, earlier in the season, so you know Sligo will be wanting to put that right. Obviously, new manager coming in there as well, so. Martin Russell will be looking to, you know, try and, I suppose, get them moving forward, uh, you know, putting his own stamp on things. You know, they have Europe coming up now as well. So, yeah, big big couple of weeks for Sligo. And uh, I think a draw there. I think he'll be happy with a draw just uh, if we could uh, sort of keep the whole thing ticking over that, that way. 
Yeah, just finally, I never asked you about your own form. Are you happy with how you've been performing with, with Drogheda, particularly in that five-game unbeaten run, Keith? Yeah, look, I suppose, you know, actually, I, I played I played the Harps game, I played the Shamrock Rovers game, and then I picked up a bit of a niggle on the in the in the Bulls game. So I've been sort of nursing that for the for the past week or two. So I've sort of hopefully this week now, um, I say I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back in contention for a spot. Um, I think it's maybe just the the quick turnaround in games, the maybe a bit of traveling that was happening um, up and up up with that. Um, but like I say, I've, I've been very happy with the way it's been going. You know, uh, you know, speaking to the manager and that there, and you know, we're both we're both happy with the move. I suppose when you you know you never know how it's going to go, but um, he says he's delighted with it. You know, I'm really happy with the way it's gone so far, and you know, it just says me to be back playing football and and the and the League of Ireland. Um, it's really something that I didn't didn't think was something that I'll be looking to do, but I'm just I'm delighted that the move came about and with the way it's gone, you know, just so far, I'm touch wood, everything's uh, everything's been going great. Good stuff. He's not planning on getting rid of you then during the transfer window. Well, I hope not. You never know. You never know. You never know where. <laughs> I don't think there's any big money moves. I'll be keeping my eyes guys sports, but I don't, I don't see anything happening thus far. All right, listen, Keith, it's always good to see you and good, good to catch up and the best of luck of the football at the weekend. Cheers, Ashton. Thank you.